Hola Aguilas, it's Miss Bree, and today I picked a different and unique book for us to read today. It's called How to Write a Story. It's written by Kate Messner, and it's illustrated by Mark Siegel. I thought that this was a super fun and exciting book to read because it's going to teach all of you how to write a story in a picture book format. So sit back, grab a snack, well, and some pen and paper, and enjoy the read aloud. How to write a story. Step one, search for an idea, a shiny one. Look at the backdrop, look at everything going on around her. You could write about something you love or something that scares you. Look at her idea bubbles, space, horses, airplanes, sea monsters, giant spiders. She's drawing inspiration from all around her. You might write about something you know really well or research a topic you'd like to learn more about. Look at the scenery in the backdrop. Oh, look, she's headed to the library. Don't worry if not all your ideas are shiny. Sometimes you have to collect a lot of a lot to figure out what works best. Look at the library. It's full of people, thoughts, ideas. It's such a creative space, safe space. See her walking around, looking up different books and doing research. There's also people creating and coloring in the background. Step two, once you have your idea, choose a setting. Only you can decide when and where your story will take place. Oh, so look at all of these different topics and ideas. The soccer field, so that's outside. The art museum, outer space, an aquarium. She's got a lot of really great ideas. Step three, choose a main character. That's the person who grows and changes the most as the story unfolds. You can brainstorm and draw your main character if you want. Try to learn all about them before you start writing them. So now what is she doing? Oh, okay, she's standing with a notepad. And check out the illustrations. Wow, there's a lot of evolution going on. Step four, dream up a problem for your main character. It can be regular, everyday trouble, or something a bit more adventurous. Wow, so everyday trouble would be spilled juice, a stubbed toe, and lost homework. Step five, now it's time to plan your story. Start with something exciting. Make the problem worse and worse until finally your character thinks of something to do. So it looks like she went with her idea in the aquarium. That was the setting and looks like there's sea monsters and that is the problem. And now she's planning out how her story is going to be written. There's a lot of creativity in that brain. There's a lot going on. This sounds like a very interesting story. Step six, write your story with so much detail, readers can see it in their minds. When you finish your first draft, take a break and go do something else. Stories need time to blossom and grow. Hmm. So we can reflect on a story that we've read and how we can see all the details in our mind. So that is what we need to do with our story right now. Step seven, Read through your story and make a list of ways to make it better. Constructive criticism is always a great thing. Reading out loud helps especially if you can read to a friend. 
Sometimes friends see things in our stories that we don't. Soon other animals came to help. Help, the mermaid shouted. Do you want to add more detail here? That was an awesome engagement on how to give helpful constructive criticism to your friends when they ask. Step eight, when you've finished revising and your story is as captivating as it can possibly be, read through a few more times. Make sure every sentence starts with a capital letter and ends with punctuation. And if you're not sure how to spell a word, now is a good time to check. Step nine, choose a captivating title for your story and give it illustrations if you want. Pictures help tell stories too. Wow, so the mermaid and the sea monster, that's the title that she chose. And if you look up at the top, there's things that are scratched out and that's another really good way to go through and edit your stories and proofread your homework is if you um, use pencil it looks like and another colored pen to give yourself edits. Step 10, share your story with a friend or two or maybe lots of friends. The mermaid, the sharks, and the sea monster flew out of the aquarium and splashed into the sea. And let's check out these illustrations. Look at how many people are ready to read her story. And it looks like she did add illustrations into her book. Because remember, pictures always help. When your story is over and everyone's gone, start searching for a new idea that wants to be written. See, authors are always creating stories and magical things in their mind using their imagination. How awesome. I hope that you guys enjoyed this read aloud and I think I'm gonna get how to read a story for our library as well. Let's get into the takeaways. I see and hear about all of your projects and so many writing assignments from your maestras and teachers and I love that and I love whenever you guys are doing amazing things in the classroom. If you'd like to submit some of your art or stories to be displayed on my library art wall, please reach out. Your creativity can inspire. I hope all of you send me some amazing things. You can always reach out to me at school or via email. Make sure you ask your parents or teachers if you need some assistance on how to reach me. This was a really fun read aloud that gets you excited and really thinking about the, all the little details when you're, you are writing a story for class. I've always loved writing and that love was inspired because of my love for reading. So reading and writing kind of go hand in hand. I hope this book broke down how to write a story and that you enjoyed the illustrations and the fresh perspective. Remember, ideas and inspiration can come from all around you. I hope you're enjoying Women's History Month book picks. I know I really am. And if you've missed any, you can head over to Books and Brunch with Miss Bree on YouTube to catch up. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next week.